Lawns are probably the biggest users, one of the biggest users of fresh water, and it's also the, one of the biggest wasters of fresh water. Millions of Americans, not counting Europeans or any other country, just millions of Americans, waste gallons of fresh water on the maintenance and upkeep of their lawns, and fresh water is in reasonably short supply on Earth. And I, when I say fresh water, I'm not talking drinkable water. I'm talking about water that isn't salty. And us Americans water our lawns probably twice a day, millions of us. And where does that fresh water go? It goes just down to the earth. Uh, it is eventually, I don't know how much of it, but at least 1% of it is taken up by evaporation and up into the clouds to repeat the cycle of being rained on onto various properties, whether it's useful on farms or it's not useful, such as in parking lots. And it either goes out to the sea to turn immediately into salt water once it touches the ocean, or it goes into a uh, treatment plant, which rarely it ever does. So watering lawns is pretty much one of the biggest wastes of fresh water that we have and millions of Americans do it every day and they don't even account for it because they're too busy thinking about turning off their sinks and showers and whatnot. Now I thought of the problem so let's think of the solution and within a few seconds just off the top of my head I've thought we can uh, use grass that's native to the area and the climate that doesn't require watering because it's native it's uh, like in my area, it should be desert grass, and that way it doesn't require as much watering. We could use other forms of plant life that doesn't require much watering that is able to be walked on and played on. We could use stones, which are not very com comfortable to walk on unless they're like river stones, really smooth river rocks. And we can replace all of that with concrete. And my favorite is concrete. Or maybe even just straight up dirt. Like with concrete is actually useful. You can do a lot of stuff on concrete. Fix cars, ride a skateboard, ride your bike around, play basketball. Kids find concrete very, very useful. Or you can just completely take out the grass and just use the dirt underneath it that requires no maintenance and eventually you walk over it so much it compacts itself. It's could be a little bit ugly to look at, but you can use it for multiple things. You can let your kids play in it. Gardening, you can take the grass out and just leave the dirt left behind. And there's multiple ways you can take absolutely completely useless dirt that would be used for like construction filling. And you can make it uh, nutritionally packed for plants and do gardening in it. And you don't even have to grow fruits and vegetables, which may save you a marginal amount of money. You have to grow fruits and vegetables in huge amounts just to save a little bit of money. But if you wanted to do it for a hobby, then that, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, but my thinking is use uh, native plants and plants that don't require much water that still look pretty, low maintenance, and you can have your own little garden or oasis that's uh, low maintenance and doesn't require much water. I'm pretty sure if I thought about it a little bit longer, I could come up with some other useful and pretty cool ways. I also just thought of this. Uh, I didn't take into consideration the amount of oxygen that grass produces. Unlike the stupid uh, fans that we're going to use to filter out carbon dioxide from the air, plants actually filter out carbon dioxide from the air and release the much needed oxygen that we're replacing with CO2 so far and they do it pretty much for free if they're in the natural habitat. So we do spend a lot of fresh water on lawns but it also produces a lot of uh, oxygen especially in sunny areas but also the problem with that is that I'm pretty sure that trees produce way more oxygen. So I, pro I think if you live in a major city, in a suburb with lots of lawns, it's probably helping a little bit to uh, counteract greenhouse 
gas effects. But still, trees are, would be probably more effective at that.